Okay, good evening. I am here with Kayla Clark and Rachel Moaning, who are two current OR fellows. Kayla is a first year and Rachel is a second year OR fellow, and we are going to go through a couple of questions and get some information from them. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Happy to be here. So, Kayla, we'll start with you. Can you tell us what it's, well, first tell us who you are, what you majored in, where you're located at right now with the OR Fellowship. Give us a little introduction to yourself. Sure thing. Um, my name is Kayla Clark. Um, I am a 2021 graduate um, from Marion. Um, while I was at Marion, I was a communication major and I had minors in business and writing. Um, and I concentrated in public relations. And basically now what I do is I'm in a rotational program, which is very common um, for OR fellows. Um, but what I do currently is I'm a brand coordinator for NCW, which is a staffing recruiting talent solutions firm located off of Keystone and 46. Um, we work in all different industries, but our main one is construction. And what I do is marketing for our professional services industry, as well as I'm the social media manager. I work with public relations and um, branding for NCW as a whole. And Rachel? Sure. Yeah, hi, I'm Rachel Monning. I graduated in 2020 with a degree in marketing and a minor in communication. And currently I'm at a company called Lev, which is a marketing focused consultancy for Salesforce. Um, and the position I do, um, I, I'm in a UX developer role, um, so a lot of coding um, and marketing related um, campaigns, um, and I'm really enjoying it so far. So Kayla, if you would explain what it's like to be an OR fellow in your first year. So <laughs> if I could kind of explain like the month of June uh, as a first year OR fellow, in one word, I'd probably say like crazy. Um, that first month is is really like a super whirlwind of, hey, you're starting your full time job um, right out of college, and also, hey, this is really what or fellowship is about because kind of it's kind of crazy. Like you get the job in November, and then you kind of just wait, and you feel like, mm, is this even real? <laughs> and then in June is really when it takes off. Um, as a first year, you know, all I can really say is that it just has felt so good to be amongst people who I felt like really understood, you know, the passion behind wanting to contribute to something like so much bigger than yourself, um, and wanting to be a part of something really special, specifically right after college, um, that wasn't just like basic like we're going somewhere where your skills were like really valuable and i think as a first year that has just like really changed my life um knowing that what i had to offer even come june a month after i graduated college was valuable um i think that that just has made me feel super confident in myself um even as a first year so i can't even imagine probably how rachel feels now that she's two years in but i feel pretty good um in my first year Excellent. And what about you, Rachel? Yeah, so um, sorry, the question is, what does it feel like to be an OR fellow? Yeah, right. so what, um, yeah, what is it like to be an OR fellow? So maybe like okay. from first year to second year, what, what's the difference in that feeling? Yeah, um, just a lot of it comes down to um, getting more comfortable. Um, so the first year it is a little bit chaotic, but at the same time, it's also kind of like being back in school again, because you are surrounded by people like what Kayla said, everyone is, you know, pretty like minded and, and has uh, the same goals in that moment that they're working towards and um, everyone obviously has a job too that they're also doing at the same time. So um, it's, yeah, different because you are out in the real world. Um, but it's also like, um, Kind of like riding the bike again you just you know you're back um working towards something with a lot of other people around you to help you out um, and then your second year you get a lot more comfortable and you start to want to venture out a little bit more on your own um, you have 
big ideas and big plans. Um, a lot of them cultivated throughout the first year with, you know, everyone surrounding you, um, which is really awesome. And then, um, yeah, and you start to kind of feel like you can fly a little bit more, um, not as timid. Uh, and you start to realize like what all you're really capable of. Um, and it starts to, it kind of feels, you know, like real, real life at that point. <laughs> Did you have any coding experience before you took your job at Love? I did not know. So that was one of the really, really cool things about War Fellowship is that it allowed me to learn a completely different career than I had anticipated going into. I kind of got near the end of senior year and I was like, okay, I have a marketing degree. I feel like I have a couple ideas of some jobs that I could apply for, but I wasn't like super thrilled with a ton of the prospects. Um, so or fellowship was perfect to kind of get my foot in the door and maybe help me experience something that um, that wasn't, you know, what I was originally going for. And I got really lucky with love because they taught me so much. And I learned, um, I mean, I learned how to code from the ground, ground up pretty much. Um, so it's been it's been super interesting, super fun um, to to have that experience and to have a good support system while I did that. Awesome. And then. How can an undergraduate, current undergraduate, prepare for the OR process? So, what I would probably say really is that preparing for OR, like, probably started before I even knew that OR existed. Um, it, I mean, I can't stress enough, like, how you know, what I was always taught and kind of what I always told myself was like, you should have fun in college, but like those four years are to prepare you for like what's after and like a little bit of balancing, like living in the moment versus like trying to prepare for the future. Um, so like the Capricorn in me is like, eh, like my, you probably should have started like a couple years ago, but nobody knows maybe what or is, or you're not really thinking about it until probably junior year. So the first thing that I would say, like for someone who's just now finding out about or would be reach out to somebody. Um, if you go to our website um, or fellowship.org, you can basically find people from your university, basically either current fellows or alum. Um, and this is something that I wish I had done um, before senior year was basically reach out to them and ask them, like, you know, how did you find out about this? What was it like? Um, like, do you have a minute to talk? Um, it's difficult to get out of your comfort zone in that way, but it's those like little connections that I think specifically with current fellows that really make or break, you know, your, I don't want to say success in the program, but just remembering who you are, right? Like if you're reaching out to us and you show us that you're interested, we're going to call that back and be like, oh, they're really, you know, interested in this. They care about this. They're not just looking for like a quick job. Um, so that would probably be the first thing that I would say. Um, and then obviously, <laughs> Brandy, you know, I'm going to say go to the exchange. <laughs> like I, I told a lot of my candidates that, um, I, you know, I, I couldn't recommend it enough. I mean, I probably went like a million times um, even before senior year. And I just think no matter what, getting that resume looking tip top shape, no matter what stage of college that you're in is, is going to be helpful. And especially for, or I probably wouldn't have even made it past the first Lord. I probably wouldn't have even made it past the first checkpoint with the resume I came in with originally. So. What about you, Rachel? How do you think that an undergrad or how did you prepare or what advice might you have for current students? Yeah, so my advice, um, I told everyone this when I was doing a lot of recruiting my first year. Um, one thing that I did that for whatever reason, I mean, it was everyone talked about it was I just did this Google Analytics for beginners course, which I think it might be required now for business students. Uh, but just like little things like that, something kind of tangible, it doesn't have to take that long. The Google Analytics one was like maybe six or seven hours. But it was something that I could put on my resume that looked like a legit kind of certification or something that, you know, was very professional. That wasn't just, you know, my internship experience or, you know, a high school job or something like that, that I could actually put on my resume and speak to, um, to, you know, learning a new skill. And then kind of along with that, um, I started to really start paying attention to um, business news and all of this kind of um, 
related to my major. So um, being in marketing, it kind of had that, that leg up. Um, if you're someone who might not be in business, it um, might be a little bit harder to get into something like that. Um, but just because a, a lot of the jobs in or do kind of sway that way, um, it just made sense to kind of um, know what you were getting yourself into and start to like know what to listen for and, and talk about. Um, and then finally, I would say getting into networking as much as possible. Um, a lot of the first kind of few rounds of um, or, uh, or of applying for it is our networking events. So um, taking advantage of networking nights, if that stuff still goes on, um, any kind of mock interview, um, partaking in competitions. I know um, in the business school, at least we had uh, sales competitions and negotiation competitions and things like that. And a lot of those you can, when you go, there's a bunch of other schools there and people you can network with. And it's kind of low stakes there where you can just you know, start getting comfortable going up to people and talking to to people you wouldn't normally, you know, maybe be comfortable going up to, um, kind of like how I was. Um, but I think that'll definitely give you a leg up. That would be my my advice. When you say that you start to follow business news, mm -hmm. LinkedIn new like you like LinkedIn feed following businesses in Indianapolis, that kind of stuff, like the IBJ just watching the news, what types of things would you suggest? Yeah, there are so many options out there. And I know that um, some sound a lot more boring than others. I discovered uh, Morning Brew when I was a junior, senior. Um, it's a New York based um, kind of millennial, I guess, age like business news, but they um, they <clears throat> write their their news in such a way that it's, it's interesting to read and um, it's got, you know, some good flair. Um, so I got into Morning Brew and then also just listened to some podcasts. So I got into um, Snacks Financial, which is just like a, it was more of a finance news, um, but they had some really interesting little tidbits here and there. So um, just start by doing some searches. There's so many like blogs out there where it's like the top, you know, however many news, you know, to look out for. Um, and just kind of, you can usually find something to, to tailor it there. And at the very minimum, um, if you're on LinkedIn, they do have like a little, you know, usually a, a daily rundown where it's like the top five business stories. And even just starting there to like start to kind of figure out what the flow of news is, is big too. And then that way it makes it easier to digest other news down the line. Excellent. Thank you. And then Kayla, what ultimately led you to choose becoming an OR fellow over job searching in a traditional job? So part of the reason that I wanted to go for OR fellowship was because of the challenge of OR fellowship in itself. So there, there are many benefits to OR, right? One specifically being that you solidify a job in November. So it's one of those things where it's like, even if it hadn't worked out per se, like I would have still had time. And so I wasn't really putting all my eggs in one basket, even though this was a basket that I really wanted. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think just the fact that only like six to 8% of total about 1200 applicants, um, get accepted, I kind of just knew that the process would put me with people that understood, I don't want to sound like silly saying this, but the grind, right? Like all this energy that I've been putting in to prepare myself for the future over the last four years and all the things that I gave up, right? All the things that I did. I knew that the people in this group, when they were narrowed down, really understood that. And kind of going back to um, this point of like confidence, right? You know, maybe I didn't have a lot of confidence in myself, but I truly felt that, you know, if I can make it through this process and someone chooses me, then like clearly there's, I've got something to offer that like I can't even see in myself at this point, right? And just the whole process, I think, made me feel like, my skills are actually really valuable and I'm not going to go do something that I don't really want to do. So like, I think like a lot of what I was, a lot of my anxiety was I'm going to go to school for four years and this is what I want to do. And then it's going to come time, especially like, I know Rachel graduated like pandemic, pandemic. I'm like sub pandemic, <laughs> um, but like sub pandemic, I was like, well, what is even out there? 
how do I get started? And it was like, or was just like, check, 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 check. We're going to do this, this, this. It was almost easier really in the long run. I think looking back, I don't want to say easier, but like, it was kind of easier, like looking back than it would have been to like do it normally. I just think it checked all the right box for me being with people who were driven, motivated, um, people who are outgoing. Um, and that's kind of why I applied. What about you, Rachel? Um, yeah, so a lot of the same reasons um, and probably the main one, just to be extremely blunt, it was like, because it's so early, the application window was like one of the first ones that I applied for. Um, and I had a good friend of mine who really pushed me to do it because for so long I was like, oh, it sounds too good to be true. I don't really know. And he finally was just like, just do it. It's easy to, you know, the first step is so easy. It's yeah, a couple minutes if that. Um, and then as the steps went on and as I met people through networking events and just learned more about it, um, it just definitely felt like the right path. Um, and the, the opportunity to learn something completely new and different, I think I, I can go back and say that's one of the biggest, um, my, one of my biggest takeaways is that, yeah, there's, there's no way I probably would have gotten into developing had I not done our fellowship. Um, and I'm really excited to kick off a career in it. Excellent. So last question for you both. How have you grown professionally over the past year and over the past two years? So one thing that I have been routinely challenged with um, since I started working with NCW um, is finding the strategy behind my ideas. I think um, I was a content marketing intern for the Marion marketing department for like two years while I was at Marion. And a lot of what I did there was like help create content, help go get pictures of students and you know, all of the, these just idea, idea, idea. Oh, this would be fun. Oh, this would be cute. Oh, I'd really like to do this. And we could kind of make it happen. Right. Cause I was just an intern at that point. And one of the ways I feel like I'm growing now is without that, like hand to hold. And I walked in, I was an intern, a social media intern. I walk into a job for the first time. They're like, you're the manager. I'm like, oh, okay. I don't really all right, like imposter syndrome a little bit. And where really where I'm growing is just the strategy behind what I'm doing. It used to be, well, let's do this because I like it. And that's fine, but does that grow the brand? Does it get us where we need to be? Is it really engaging? Um, Cause if I'm the only person liking it, that doesn't really matter. So I think where I've grown exponentially is this, oh, like this question of, so what, um, I, you know, pose it to myself quite a bit, um, when I'm creating content and I think it's helped me in a sense that now I can actually put those numbers on a resume and I can say like, I helped with this very specific goal. Um, and obviously when I was an intern, I didn't really have those numbers. And I think professionally, that's really what people are looking for. And aside from developing, Rachel, how have you grown professionally? Um, yeah, I would say I could kind of sum it up in um, in one word, really, in communication um, and then networking kind of on top of that, but they kind of go together. Um, but I think learning how to feel confident in like who I am and what I know has really given me the ability to communicate a lot better and to not be so afraid to network and, and put myself out there. I, find that I'm, I'm usually a pretty shy, reserved, reserved person. Um, so when it comes to networking, I really have to push myself, but I feel like it's less of a hurdle at this point. I feel like I've just, <clears throat> I've learned so much in, in how to carry myself and, and you know, view others um, that I don't feel so, so scared or nervous anymore um, when reaching out to someone new. And I think we're all just trying to find our way in the world, so. Yeah, the one thing, that life has taught me is that nobody has a clue what they're doing. Everybody is in the same boat with no clue what they're doing. And, and we're just working toward, towards something. <laughs> <laughs> something. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And then um, someone asks you what that something is and you're like, I don't know how to explain it to you. 
<laughs> yeah. So I really appreciate your time. I'm going to stop recording.